privileged today to welcome Tyre Popjoy to share some of her experiences at St Helia. Thank you, Tyre. Hello, thank you for inviting me here today. Um, I've had a bit of a rough time having children. My first child I had in 2004 and everything was fine and very easy going. I got pregnant easily, gave birth, I was really relaxed and laid back about it. I actually thought it was really easy and didn't know what anyone was complaining about. And then um, when my daughter was 18 months old, decided to try for my second, which ended up being a miscarriage. So once again, I was very blasé about it. Miscarriages happen, um, everything is fine. Um, then uh, about nine months later, got pregnant again. And this time, ended up um, having a stillbirth. And um, at the time, I was just told, well, continue. It's, these things happen, and that's <laughs> life, and you must just be strong. So ended up getting pregnant yet again and had another miscarriage, but this time a lot later, it was at um, 12 weeks, so we thought we were over the worst um, stage. And then got pregnant yet again, and um, was absolutely paranoid throughout the whole of this pregnancy that everything was wrong, the baby wasn't going to survive, um, and I was constantly um, guided, don't worry, you'll be all right and everything. And then unfortunately, um, I had yet another stillbirth a little bit further gone than the first time. Um, this time round, obviously, it um, totally broke me, to be honest, because it happens once and you do somehow make yourself forget it, but when it happens a second time, you believe that you're no longer able to have children. Um, and that's when I got involved um, with Carolyn and involved with Maggie George, who um, supported me throughout the um, times I was having a tough time. I was introduced to her after I'd had my um, second stillbirth and she talked me through and tried to get me around because the advice I was being given was that I had had one live birth, therefore I was capable of having another one. And um, it was recommended that I was going to try some um, hepone treatment to try and see if this would work. But to see if I could have the guts to go through yet another um, pregnancy to find that once again um, I had was going to lose yet another child um, is a very traumatic time especially because my younger daughter at this point in time had started school and I had only just told everybody that I was pregnant for the um, fifth time and um, some people had found out that I had had a stillbirth and then for it to happen all over again with strangers who want to cuddle you and tell you that everything is fine is a very traumatic experience. Um, I also run my own business and I was having to deal with clients who I didn't know very well and um, I found that more difficult than almost coping myself with having had the loss. Um, so I finally actually by accident got pregnant again because I wasn't sh sure that I was really going to be able to get um, through it and um, so really had no choice in the decision and therefore saw Maggie on a regular basis. Uh, Maggie was amazingly supportive. Um, she was always on the end of the line for me. So were all the staff at St Helia. I can't praise St Helia enough. Um, whenever I had any worry whatsoever, um, by this time they all knew me by first name, and I was constantly in and out constantly requiring to hear the heartbeat, making sure that everything was okay. And I would sometimes be in and back the next day and they would always have a smiling face, always welcome me and say that I could come back whenever I wanted to. And I think by this time, um, Karen was counting the hours that I was going to be allowed to give birth. Um, and finally, I gave birth to um, my second little girl, who's actually now two and a half, and um, we had her induced because um, when we got to 38 weeks, um, neither of our nurse could take, that's Karen and me, our nurse could take it anymore. And then Maggie was still there for me. And interestingly, I was then wondering what role Maggie would need to have because I had my little baby and everything was great. But what I didn't realise was actually that now was my darkest time because I had a live baby in my hands and I really appreciated having her and I really understood that, sorry, the two that had died 
were babies. And all along, I tried to pretend that they weren't babies and that they were just fetus. To such degree that even on the first certificate, I wouldn't name her. I insisted on her being called a fetus coming in. Uh, Maggie totally saw me through all this. And I had a baby. All my friends thought, I'm over it. I've got an amazing time now. I've got two little kids. And there was no one to talk to. And Maggie was there the whole time. And even when she rang <coughs> me, and I'd be, yeah, I'm fine. No, everything's great. I've got to go. I've got a meeting and everything. She'd go, no, Tara, sit down for a minute and tell me what's going on in your life. How is everything coping? What's going on? How's the baby and everything? And she would push and push and push until finally I would actually tell her how I was feeling. And she's the only woman who I've known to be able to push me that far and get that much out of me. And what St Helia gave was absolutely amazing. And I'm extremely thankful because if it wasn't for Carolyn and Maggie, I wouldn't have a, a second little girl today. Thank you.